All right, what do we do with bitterness? To be bitter is to be human. It's an experience that we all have. But to stay bitter is to be a human who's sick with something that is clearly going to kill us. I want to check in on you today. So down in the comments right now, I want you to go give me a number between one and five. One is I need more support. I'm not quite there. And five is I'm feeling pretty good. I'm ready for this. Let's dig into it. I want to see how you're doing. I'm going to interact with you. So leave me a number down in the comments. If this is your first time checking this out, my name is Pastor Nate Lejeune. I'm the pastor of Home Church. At Home Church, we're a community of home-based churches that empower leaders to gather their circle, grow in our relationship with God and with each other. And I'm glad that you've joined me today as we continue our series on process. Being bitter is a real human experience. We all have it. It all kind of creeps up on us and it's equally human to try to ignore it. But there's always like a little tell to know when I'm bitter. And that is when something bad happens, what's my first reaction? Is my first reaction like, I knew it, they deserved it. That was coming for them. Sooner or later, that was gonna catch up with them. Or what is that very first reaction? When something bad happens to somebody, it's an easy tell. Is bitterness somewhere down inside of me? Bitterness just shows up in like really pronounced ways in our lives. Matter of fact, psychologists say that you bring bitterness with you and anger into every relationship, even new relationships, that we get so caught up in the wrong that was done to us in the past that we can't actually enjoy what's currently happening for us. We become depressed or anxious. We feel like our life is void of purpose and, and we even wrestle with like our spiritual beliefs. We even pull ourselves back from relationships and we lose that connectedness to the enriching relationships that we have in our lives. This is the effects of what bitterness can do in every single one of us. Bitterness also can ruin a meal. Too much of a bitter item inside of a meal can completely ruin it and equal a five-star meal, having with someone who's a little too bitter can completely ruin that experience. But a chef, a master chef, they know how to take something bitter and melt it with something sweet to create an experience, a, a, a meal that just surpasses any descriptive words that any of us have. If you want to hear my last message on this backstory, just click here and you can go back and watch that one. But the children of Israel, the Hebrew people, they've been let go. Now Pharaoh's had time to think about it and he completely realizes that I've made a mistake here and he gets his army together and he chases after them. God now protects the Hebrew people with a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. And, and he even brings them to this place where they are now caught literally between a hard place and a rock. They have the army who's trying to kill them in front of them, a river that will kill them right behind them. And now they have nowhere to go until God tells Moses to lift out his staff, to part the Red Sea, where the children of Israel are now going to walk across on dry land. And Pharaoh and his army would not be dissuaded. They follow right after it. And that is when Moses re reaches out his staff. Re reaches out? I don't know if that's how you say that, but you get the point. He reaches it out. The water's crashing and it kills everyone. And now the Hebrew people are finally free, at least physically free. But we're soon going to find out that they are not quite free just yet. And this is where we pick up the story. You ever experienced deja vu? I have dreams sometimes where the reality or another dream both feel like I've dreamt this before or I've experienced experienced this before. It's this moment of like, wait a second, I've been here before. It's this weird emotion that we have. I also have the very real experience of having to do something over and over and over again until I finally learned the lesson. It was 10 plus years of traveling to airports before I realized that wearing belts and dressing is normal with normal shoes and watches and things on my wrist and things in my pocket all just stressed me out when I had to take all of that stuff off and the people behind me are being very impatient. And then when you get to the other side of security, you have to take all that stuff off and put it back on. It was 10 years before I finally realized Kuyon don't wear all that stuff. Wear easy stuff to get through security. And then I was really smart and I went and got pre-check and I don't have to worry about any of that anymore. It is human to continue to make mistakes over and over and over again as I shake my table and shake my camera here. But three things happen to the Hebrew people in the next part of this story. And I feel like God shows us three areas, three areas in our lives that he wants to heal us as part of our process, especially when we're talking about bitterness, our past, our needs, and what he wants for us in our faith. All right, so they're free, they dance, they worship, and then they take off. Immediately in chapter 15, Moses and the people have just finished worshiping and experiencing this amazing moment 
a miracle that most of us have a hard time truly believing about this Red Sea and escaping Pharaoh and the enemy. They get to the other side and immediately, within three days, they get to a place, there's no water, and the water that is there is undrinkable. It, it's bitter and they don't know what to do. And they begin to murmur and complain and go at Moses really hard. I'm talking a lot today about human experiences. I think often we don't embrace the very real shared experiences that we all have. And it is a very real experience to want what we don't have. I am a technology nerd. I love technology. I don't care what kind of technology. If it is new technology, if it is new and shiny and cutting edge, I want to go. I am an early adopter. I am ready. To, I will pay the premium price. I'm willing to make the sacrifices. I want the new stuff. I can't help it. You always want what you don't have. What do you do with that whenever what you don't have are just your normal, common, everyday needs? What do you do with that? When my want, when my desire, what I need are just my basic human needs. And that's where the Hebrew people were. They just wanted water, harmless enough. They started coming at God. They started coming at Moses. They started to murmur. That word isn't something that we use a ton of, but it was more than just complaining. They were doubting that God even had the power to take care of them. They were doubting that Moses was even the leader that he was saying that he was to be, even though they just experienced the Red Sea, they just experienced this amazing miracle. They find themselves when their needs are not met, murmuring, complaining, and doubting God's even existence and power to take care of them. It sounds a lot like me. It doesn't matter the experiences. It doesn't matter what you've come through. The default sometimes when we are bitter, when bitterness is inside of our lives, comes right back to being negative and ugly and doubting God's power right there in our lives. It couldn't drink the water because it was bitter. It was messed up. It was undrinkable. This resource for life could not be drank by them because of saltiness and bitterness. That was sometimes we just have days where we wake up. And we're just in a bad mood. We can't really pinpoint it. We can't explain it. No one has done us anything. We are just in a crabby mood and anything and everything seems to frustrate us, aggravate us. We have a sharp fuse. We have a hair trigger, whatever word that you want to put on it. We are quickly to be aggravated. We are frustrated. These Hebrew people were just frustrated, angry folk, bitter, salty, wanting something for their lives. And even though it was right there, they couldn't drink it and they were angry about it. And then God does another miracle for them. He makes Moses toss in a stick. It heals the water. It's no longer bitter. It can now be drank. They have their needs met and God gives them a foretelling, a warning, a, an, an inside look, the answers to the quiz that they were going to get to retake in just a couple of sentences when you need something if you will obey me if you will listen to me if you will follow after me i will take care of you i will be there for you god is increasing their faith he's bringing them from miracle to miracle to miracle he's doing all of these amazing things and one last time he stops to say if you'll just listen you'll just obey if you'll just trust me i'll take care of you Every single time, still screwed it up because we're hard headed. We make mistakes. We're human. It is a real human experience to have to do things over and over and over. But Corinthians tells us, for we walk by faith and not by sight. God has you. If you find yourselves continuing to stumble, to fall, to continue to retake quizzes, in life over and over and over. I want to encourage you today that God's got you. You do not have to walk by sight alone. You have to have faith that God has got you. If you just trust him, he will come through for you every single time. God's got you. And so they go through the template. They go through the dry ground, through the Red Sea, watch their enemy completely destroyed in front of them. They now have this experience at the bitter water that has turned sweet and now they can drink it. And literally within one sentence, as they continue on their journey, there they go murmuring again. They, they were just told, trust in God, he'll meet your needs. 
And here they go murmuring that they want food. They begin to complain to Moses like, well, did you bring us out here to die? We wish we were back in Egypt. We wish we were slaves because there we had pots of meat and we had leeks and we had garlic and we had everything. We had onions. We had all the things that we wanted. And though that's not what they wanted, but in this moment, that's what they wanted. And now you've brought us out here. We've got no food. We've got no water. We want meat. We want bread. The water's not enough. We need even more. It is deja vu all over again for the Hebrew people. They're doubting God. They're doubting. Moses and Moses here he goes back to God crying again asking what to be done and God meets their needs one more time he just told us if you have faith if you listen if you obey I'm going to meet your needs but they didn't hear that part and that's what bitterness will do to us bitterness will give us selective hearing it'll allow us to hear and to take away only the things that we want to take away it will keep us from hearing the truth that is right there in front of us. The truth is the answer to the problems that we are facing. We can't receive the apology and move forward. We, we can't uh, bring restoration to the relationship. We, we can't move past it in our jobs. We can't move past the mistake that I made back or the thing that was done to me when I was a child because bitterness has now taken a hold of me. It, it refuses to allow me to hear and to see that I can move forward, that I can use this to propel me to a great future instead. Now bitterness is like, it has deadened my heart. It's killed my hearing and it refuses to allow me to see clearly that I can be the one who moves forward from this. Our past can leave us feeling very bitter. The Hebrew people struggled and bitterness can do that to us. Our past can haunt us like a ghost in the night. And that's what it was doing for them. It was just haunting them. It was covering them. It was there at every thought, every moment, every word that they said was just coded in their past, coded in the bitterness of what they had just been through. It's always there. It's always questioning. It's always doubting. It's like there in the night. It's there in every dream, in every conversation, and in every word. And you and I can often be held back from our truest self, our truest potential in life, by the skid marks of our past. We've got to move forward. Bitterness will keep us from being able to truly step forward and getting our needs met. God wants to heal you from the effects of your past. He wants to turn something that was bitter into something that was sweet. Psalms 34 and 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Being healed of our past is a choice. It's a choice that you and I get to make all on our own. And God is ready. He's there. He's willing to support it. If we are brave enough to take the steps forward, to deal with the bitterness that's inside of our lives, to take a step forward, to self-identify that this is a problem in my life, to ask for help and to lean into God healing the past, the bitterness, the pain, that is there. These Hebrew people and their water man. It, these are three back to back to back stories. They just refuse to listen and to learn. And I relate so much to this story. I often have to repeat things over and over. And, and in the moment, I'm just like, what? What am I doing? Why? Why do I continue to do that thing? Didn't I learn the last time? They sure didn't. They, they get their needs met. They get meat. They get bread. This amazing provision that's given to them with manna and pigeons that God rains down on them. I, that's not a rainstorm that I want to go through anytime soon. It's raining right now. Hopefully it's not pigeons. And now they go back to another place and there they are complaining about water again. These people struggle even when they are experiencing miracles. And it looks a lot like the church community. The church community that I am a part of, we experience God in his fullness, in worship, in miracles, in preaching, in, in our new birth. And yet we continue to look around and doubt and have our faith rocked even in the midst of experiencing miracle why here they are again questioning god questioning moses why are you not giving us water and i see in this moment that when you mix your current need with a hurtful past it makes you ignore even the miraculous miracles that are happening every single day right in front of you this is the power the bitterness can have in every single one of our lives. This is why we've got to deal with this stuff. This is why God wants to make sure that this is a part of our process, that we deal with our bitterness. Their faith was damaged and they were missing the identity of God that was happening all around them. And we can be a part of a faith community, a spiritual community, all we want. We can still carry with us for years on end a damaged 
faith, a faith that keeps us from experiencing the fullness of life, the fullness of God and community all around us. When things go bad, what is your first reaction? Is it hurt? Is it questioning? Is it doubt? Is it resentment? If it is, these are identifiers. These are telltales that maybe our faith has been damaged and God wants to deal with. He not only wants to heal us from our current needs, He not only wants to heal us of our past, but He wants to heal us of a damaged faith. Faith that questions His even power and existence right here in front of us. Paul says this in Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Is my hope broke? Do I find myself questioning hope all the time? The world around us, man, it is so desperate for hope. It is so lacking hope. We have to fight to try to bring hope into our lives. And if I find myself lacking hope, I find myself lacking hope in my situation, in my circumstance, in my job, in my relationships, in my spirituality, in my every single day. And these are, are identifiers that I have a broken faith. I have a faith that God wants to touch God wants to heal. Hebrews 11 and 16 says, and without faith, it's impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he awards those who diligently seek him. I think I had a stroke right there, but it's okay. I'm still here. I can't even please him with my life unless I have a strong faith an undamaged faith. Romans 10 and 17 says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ, hearing his voice, hearing his words, hearing what he thinks of me and what he's doing in the relationships around me. That is what rebuilds my faith. That is what draws me closer to him. God heals my faith through experiencing him, through worship, through his word, and through community. When I'm experiencing him in every aspect that he's put around me, when I know that his word is for me, that he is with me, that my faith can be healed. They kept repeating the same routine over and over and over. This all actually started way back in Egypt. They were called, they wanted, they wanted, they wished they were still a slave. What is it in my life that I can't move on from? Where did this all start and why can't I move on? forward. Then they murmured. Over and over and over again, the Hebrew people murmured. They doubted, they questioned, and they didn't even think he had the power and, and to be around them and to take care of them and to meet their needs. What are you saying about your life? What are you saying about God in your life? If bitterness has taken hold, and it does for every single one of us, every single one of us wrestle with this at different times and moments in our lives, and these are the things that God says that we can do to get healed from these things. Ask for help. I got to talk to the people around me. I got to lean in on the spiritual community, on friends, on community people that he has put inside of my life. I've got to pray. I've got to have communications with him. I've got to be one with him in order for me to hear his voice. And I've got to forgive. What is it that i got to let go? Forgiveness is a gift that I give myself, not that I give others. I let myself out of that prison. Who is it? What is it that I need to forgive? Surround yourself with a community. This is why the church was his creation. He gave us a community of people to walk this out every single day, to support us step by step as we go closer to him we get healed from this bitterness, and then finally spend time in his word. And I want to encourage you with some words, Proverbs 16 and 24, gracious words are like honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the body. This is why it's important to have good people in my life to speak good things into my life. They heal me. They energize me. They make me better. Psalms 119 and 103 says, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to the mouth. His words are sweet. Yes, they cut. Yes, they convict. But his words are for me. They are not against me. His words are sweet to my mouth. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Do not lean into your own understanding. Some of this stuff won't even make rational sense. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Your God is has got you. And finally, Luke 13 and 7 says, for nothing is impossible with God. He is for me. He is with you. And he wants to heal you from this bitterness. He wants to meet your needs. He wants to heal your current needs. He wants to heal your past. He wants to take away the sting from the past that has been there. And finally, he wants to heal your faith. He wants you to have a complete and whole faith so that we please him, so that we're one with him, we're closer to him, we can walk this out every single day. Change your words from bitterness to sweetness by changing what I stick my mind on, what I allow my mind to think on, 
and the words that I let to come out of my mouth. God wants to move us forward. He was helping the Hebrew people move forward through this process of healing their bitterness. God wants to do the same for me and you. He wants to meet your needs. He wants to heal your past. And he wants to help you move forward with a solid faith. The rest is up to you and me. And I'm praying for you. And I want to hear your story. Come be a part of this journey. I pray that this encourages you and helps you. You can catch up with our series that we're currently in by just clicking this playlist right above me. We want you to come and be a part of this family. Homechurch217.com. This is where you can see our story. You can hear how we got to where we are. You can see our values. You can see when we meet, how we meet, what to expect during those experiences, and a place there to let us know what you need. Let us know your story. How can we support you? Can we help you find a community? Do you need baptism? Do you need prayer? It's a great place to come and to connect with us. Home Church 217, anywhere that you download apps, download our app. There you can see our latest media. You can see when we meet, you can come and, and join us. And you can also use our in-app messaging group. There you can reach out and, and ask questions. You can make connections and get connected to people that will love you, pray for you and support you and surround you as a spiritual community. And then finally, the easiest part, you can like and subscribe right here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of the social media that we have. Come be a part of the family. Come join us as we walk this out week by week, not only here on video, but also in our homes. We pray together, worship together, enjoy food together, great meals together, and just walk this out day by day. I love you. You matter. You matter to me. You matter to our community. You matter on this planet and the people that believe in you. We want to walk this out. We're in process. You're in process. Every single day is a part of growing in that process. Can't wait to see you till next time. Till then, God bless. Yeah. Smash that like and subscribe. 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 subscribe.